Basically, we started with nothing and ended up with a thousand acres. And I was doing that on an outdoor rider's income. This is a clip from the Exodus and Land podcast with Bill Winky, and we talk about how he was able to basically buy an entire neighborhood in southern Iowa and how he was able to buy land on a rider's income in the 2000s. I hope you guys enjoy this. Let's get right into it. Here we go. How would you handle those conversations? Because it's not for sale. Right. And you don't want to, I mean, you tell me, how, how do you knock, 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 hey, so-and-so. Yeah. Well, I mean, some people are offended by it. But, you know, what are you going to do? It's sort of like asking for permission. Yeah. You know, there are some people will say, get out of here, you know. But somebody's going to say, oh, you know, I really appreciate that. Yeah, if you want to come out and bail some hay for me or whatever, you know. Sure. So you're going to get different reactions from people. But it's not like you're coming there asking them for something. Yeah. You're, you're offering, offering them money. Yeah. You know, so, though, and, and it didn't happen immediately. You know, it happened over the process of a couple of years, you know. So it wasn't like. From initial contact to follow up. No, follow-up. until when we moved there. Okay. Yeah. So it's different when you're coming in from the outside, knocking on doors. Sure. But when you're their neighbor, yep. you're like, you're right down the road. Their kids go to school with your kids. Yep. It's different, you know. So I think that made it a lot easier, you know, so I could just say, hey, you know, uh, I, you know, I would buy some more if you ever wanted to sell. You don't sure. say, will, will you, you sell? You never yeah. ask a, a yes or no question. Uh-huh. You just throw it out there. And then they never say, oh, yeah, you know, I want to sell. They always say, oh, well, you know, I don't know. We, we haven't really thought about it. And then you, you might even say, well, you know, this is about what land is selling for. This is what I bought your neighbor, you know, down the road here. Mm-hmm. And then that kind of sets the tone. Then they start thinking, well, what could we do with that? You know, we could pay off some debt. You know, we mm-hmm. could do whatever. So then uh, that, that process kind of rolls around in their heads for a while. Then they come back and, and say, well, you know, we, we would consider that, you know. So that was kind of how it worked because um, I ended up with nine through that process, nine different transactions without a realtor involved in any of them. They were all just – you know, knocking on, not yeah. knocking on doors because now, like I said, we're living neighbors. There. Yeah. 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 So it, 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 it came together in a, a pretty uh, surprisingly efficient way. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that's why I say that it, it was more to it than just, you know, me having some, some knowledge. It was, it was a divine you know, <laughs> process because it was pretty impressive the way it came together. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did have to sell out of that subchapter S in order to afford Yep. The next piece. Which you couldn't 1031 out of. You had to pay the capital gains tax. That's that. right. Yeah. yeah. And it had gone up a lot, obviously, because yeah. when we bought in, you know, it was like $300 an acre equivalent, you know, for that share. And by the yeah. time we sold out, it was in the 15, 1600 an acre. So that, you know, that encumbered share, so to speak, was in the 1200 an acre range. Yeah. You know, so, you know, we quadrupled basically uh, our, our money on, on that piece. Yeah. So there was a fair amount of capital gains that we had to pay, but it's still left us with enough that we could keep cash moving. to go and roll into something yeah, else. Yeah. And, and the banks were good too. You know, I, I didn't borrow um, maybe as much as they would have lent me, but whenever I came up with something, they supported it. Sure. Um, so I wasn't paying cash for everything. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And, and uh, you know, there were other steps in there too that, that uh, you know, you mentioned the guy named Jack. He was one of the part owners of the subchapter S. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Jack was pretty well off. I liked Jack. We got along good. He was, he was, uh, kind of hard headed. And that was good because, you know, the, the people who tell you what, how, what they think of you, uh-huh. you know, they're better than the ones who don't <laughs> you sure. know? Right. because they're, they don't all like you, but the ones who tell you that they don't, they're the ones that you can go, okay, well I can get along with this guy. At least I know where I come up short. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, Jack was one of those guys. He uh-huh. didn't mince words, you know, so yeah. Yeah. we got along pretty good. And, and, uh, so he, he stepped in and, uh, loaned me enough to buy, uh, I think it was the second piece. Because the one with the, the 230 and the, the 160s, yeah, the 270, yeah, 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 the 275 acre piece. So he stepped yeah. in and, and financed that one for me. And, uh, you know, we just, I, I mean, it's, it, it, there's too many pieces to really go into the detail, but we, were, yeah, you have a blog, that yeah, chronicles, yeah. chronicles all of it. Right? We were strung out too far, yeah, you know, because we still owned a house in Michigan that we were trying to sell. We owned yep. this, you know, 125 that we bought that on on contract, you know, from Larry Kendall, you know, because yeah. we couldn't even finance that because yeah. the bank wouldn't, you know, so it was. There was a lot of stuff that was kind of, you know, held together by shoestrings, you know? Literally. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I had to borrow the money from Jack, and he was fine with it because I'm sure he was thinking, hey, I'll, you know, I'm happy with this if Bill defaults, you know? Because <laughs> you locked this up yeah, for Yeah, there's me. like all these big deer <laughs> yeah. out there, you know? Yeah. So, um, so that one, you know, eventually we were able to refinance that from Jack with the bank's money and then, uh, you know, buy some more. And little by little, yeah. you know, I mean, we could spend four hours talking about this, you know, the mm-hmm. little pieces and how we move stuff around and the shell games and stuff, you know, mm-hmm. that keep the, keep it coming. But, um, yeah, so that's, that was the, the, the rest of it was kind of like that too. Yeah. You know, yeah. There was nothing simple. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Cause basically 
we started with nothing and ended up with a thousand acres. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and and I was doing that on outdoor riders' income, you know, which isn't a big income. There you guys have it. I hope you guys enjoyed this conversation with Bill Winky. We have new videos like this every single week with guests like Bill Winky, Skip Sly, and so many other great folks that cover land. So if you guys are looking to learn more in this category, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, see ya.